I've been doing the Game Crafter Spotlight for a couple of years now, and Doom Pilgrim is my favorite game that I've done in the series. Let's talk about it. What does that even mean, Bowers? Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another part of the Game Crafter Spotlight, where I spotlight a different Game Crafter game every single month and do a series of videos specifically on that game. And this month, I'm checking out Doom Pilgrim from Warclaw Games. This is a solo adventure game, I guess you'd call it, where you're going to have a huge deck of tarot cards. And on these tarot cards are a bunch of colored, kind of creepy, spooky images. And on the other side, well, that's where the game takes place, because there is just tons, a mind-boggling amount of text. This is a small book here. Like, literally, you know, it, let's say, double-side this, since it's double-sided... All this, just nothing but text. You put a you put a case on this. This is a book. Well, this is how it works. It's really quite simple. You're gonna shuffle up the cards if you're starting a new game. Put three cards out, like so. One, two, three. And then you're gonna look at these. You're just gonna, ooh, I don't know. you're gonna deal with one of them. You're gonna put one of them back in the box, never to be seen again until the next time you play the game. And then you're gonna put one on the bottom of the deck because you'll potentially have to deal with it later. And then you read whatever happens on this card. So endless cold plains wandering through the cold wasteland you feel lost. According to the maps you have seen, you should already be in the kingdom of Hasbro. But unfortunately, there's still that depressing whiteness everywhere. Fatigue plus one. Now you're going to need to keep track of different stats and attributes on the side here. You wander on and on in the freezing cold. Check if the card on top of your future deck is showing at least one human building. Figures do not suffice, as you see a lot of, a lot of apparitions already. So now you're looking at the next card down, and the game does a lot of stuff like that. They're like, oh, have you met a witch doctor in this game? If so, you can do this. Have you got this? So really cool uh, ways that the cards can potentially connect, but we'll talk more about that later. Uh, if not, despair plus one. If this card shows another wilderness with no figure or dud, so it's just talking about what the next day, uh, what can potentially happen. And then it says, the next day you see deceptive apparitions on the horizon again, but they do not vanish as you come closer. Goodness, they are real men, inhabitants of these lands, going for trade to a civilization. They will finally help you out. And they would also buy these precious things from you. Uh, so if you had a big bag of pepper or a sack of salt, they would give you gold and then gold. Ooh, gold is a hard commodity to get into this game. But when you have it, there's so many different options you could do potentially with it. Which makes sense in this dark fantasy world you're going. And I've played it now four times. And every single time it's been a different story. And it has, uh, they put like a rogue sort of aspect. If you're not familiar with video games, roguelite means... Essentially, you're kind of expected to die, but then the next time you play, you're going to do better because of it's a rote because it's something the game does. In this game, it's almost kind of like a memory game. You're like, oh, I remember that this picture of the darkness is actually, you know, uh, a dead animal in a cave or something, and you get to eat it, and it's a good thing. So we're gonna pick that card, and we're gonna save that card for later for when things are really going bad, and we'll be able to pick it then. And and you would have to play it, I'd say. On a regular basis, I think. To, I mean, you do get that. I will say that. There was definitely some times where I, I kind of knew what I should or shouldn't do. But it's still very difficult. It's just naturally a very difficult game. Now, another thing that I do want to mention is this covers a lot. This is a very mature game as well. It's ages 17 plus. Even though I did play it with my 7-year-old. That sounds really bad. I was like, yeah. it's ages. Uh, but that's because there's uh, some adult content with like, you know relationships and whatnot and you can easily just not read those parts if you're playing with younger kids but i mean it's it's still a darker story about death and monsters and fighting and killing and all sorts of stuff like that dark topics uh which i think there's a huge market for so that's the game and you try and get through all the cards in the deck if you want to make it easier you take out a certain amount of the cards in the deck and that's the game look at, look at all the text on that cards so, Doom Pilgrims. Final thoughts. Let's go over the review. Let's go over the cons. Let's go over the pros. First on the con side, I wish the rule booklet was a little bit better. I wish maybe they would just have like a, a, a some sort of rule booklet because this works and you get the gist. But I definitely think for the second edition of this, and I hope, I hope, I hope they do. And I'm actually thinking about reaching out to them about because I think this would be great on Kickstarter uh, about having some sort of nicer rule booklet uh, or just because the box it just isn't enough. It's not a deal breaker. Dark theme's gonna turn some people off, but you kinda you kinda already know that. The theme's gonna be for you or not. 
it's solo, which is going to restrict the player audience. But I will say, I feel like if you play games, like if you're just like a couple, like I think I could play this with my wife and we'd have a fun time. Because it's it's just like a choose your own adventure. It really is a choose your own adventure game. Uh, you can't use that phrase because it's it's actually trademarked. I actually had to take I had to change the title of a video once. They were like, "Hey, cease and desist." I was like, "Oh, cool, thanks, man." <laughs> uh, but yeah, really like this one. That's I don't have any other cons. It's portable. The cards look very nice. They're dark. They're creepy. They're scary. They do their job. They're well written. Um, I had a lot of fun with the game. It's unique. It's interesting, and I recommend you check it out. There's a Game Crafter link down below. On the pro side, uh, I mean, I, I I like this game so much that I legitimately want to reach out to the person about how they could do stuff for like a Kickstarter or something in the future. Because I think this is just something that a lot of people would like because of its simplicity, because of its theme, because of its size, that it could potentially do so well. Because the bottom line is, this stretch goal right here, as soon as we establish that this card is a stretch goal, um, these these stretch goals are fantastic. You know, if we hit 50 of these, people are going to be, you know, super excited about it. And it's just, it's. I do so much Kickstarter content, it's just built into my brain. But that is Doom Pilgrim. Really cool game. Not quite ready. I not quite ready to slap a Bowers Vest seal on this one, but honestly, I think with some more cards, and I and here's the other thing, I would love to see them go further down the path. So like a hardcore expansion, not suitable for work expansion. Um uh, like where we because we do, we dip into some very adult topics. It's like, why not take that step further? I feel like this kind of game absolutely could do that. And I would love to see that. I think a lot of people would. I think that could be a massive Kickstarter there. But let me know in the comments below, where would you like to see this? And, and what what kind of theme would you like to see on a game like this? With all that writing and thought put into it, what kind of game would you like to see? And, and once again, I talk about like 50 stretch goals. I know that's tons. That's tons and tons and tons of writing. Um, and so I'd love to see one based about a carnies. Yeah, about carnies. I think that'd be cool. Choose your own adventure carny game. Let me know in the comments below. And if you're more interested in developing your own game, like this game right here, this totally random game that someone made on the Game Crafter and then I got from the Game Crafter and now I'm telling you how fantastic it is and planning my wedding with it and how their awesome Kickstarter is going to be, your game could potentially get that kind of treatment if you make your game on the Game Crafter because you can also sell your game on the Game Crafter's marketplace like you could buy this game right now. It's an amazing, it's amazing technology. Go check out Game Crafter. Link down below to Home Powers Game Quarter section. And as always, if you enjoyed the content, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below as I'm trying to reach 17,000 subscribers to make 2023 my biggest year ever. Bye bye.